This is the structure of observer pattern. We will see how this is implemented in C sharp source. Here is the class subject. It has data member observers. Say list of observer. It has method attach, which has parameter observer object, and inside this method it adds the observer in the observers list. Here is the method detach. Here is the method notify. In this method, it traverses the observer list and calls the update method for each observer. Here is the class concrete subject derived from class subject. It has data member state. Here is the property for state where it sets the value of a state and gets the value of a state. When it sets the value of a state, it calls the method notify, which in turn traverses the list of observers and calls the update method of observer. So the values of state will be in the sync for all the observer object. Here is the class observer. It's an abstract class. It has abstract method update. So it will be implemented in its derived classes. Here is the class concrete observer derived from class observer. It has data member state. It has data member sub of type concrete subject class. Here is the constructor for con concrete observer A. It has parameter concrete subject object. So it sets the sub data member sub data member with this object and then calls the attach method with this object where it passes itself. So it goes into goes into this method attach method of subject and here it adds the observer in this observer list. Here it overrides the method update. So it gets the value of data member state of subject and it sets it to the data member state of concrete observer A. And here it's showing the value of state. Similarly, this is the class concrete observer B. Derived from class observer, it has data member state, data member sub of type concrete subject class. Here is the constructor of concrete observer B. It gets the concrete subject object as parameter and it sets the data member sub with this object and it calls the attach method where it is passing itself. So the concrete observer B is attached, actually it's added to the observer list of concrete subject. And here it overrides the update method. And in this, it's getting the value of state from the subject. Here. Yeah. 
and setting it to the data member state of concrete object or B. And here it's displaying the value of a state. Okay, let's see the main. Here we are creating the object of concrete subject. Here we are creating the object of concrete observer A and we are passing the concrete subject object. So in the constructor of concrete observer A and B, it sets the subject with the object of concrete subject. Here for concrete observer A, here for concrete observer B. It's setting the subject. And here it's setting the state of concrete subject. So it comes here. So the state data member of concrete subject will be 1 and after setting the state data member with the value 1 it calls the method notify. So here is the method notify and in this method it traverses the observer list and first it will call the update method of concrete observer A. So it comes here, it displays this, it gets the value of data member state of subject from here and it displays that value here it's setting the data member state of concrete observer A and displaying this value. Similarly, second time it calls the update method of concrete observer B. So it comes here, displays this statement, then it gets the value of state data member of subject concrete subject and it sets it to the data member state of concrete observer B and here it displays the value of data member state of concrete observer B. We will run this program and we will see the output. Okay. So we can see when this is when it sets the state data member of concrete subject with one it comes here calls the update method of concrete observer A so it comes here and it displays the inside concrete observer update state h1. Similarly, next time here it calls the concrete observer B update method. So it comes here. So it displays inside concrete observer B update state is 1. 